Mom, family, don't watch this part. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I am Viet and I'm vegan. And today we're talking menstruation and menstruation cups because a bunch of you guys have asked me questions and I've been telling you I've been making this video for a long time. If you feel uncomfortable talking about menstruation because it grosses you out, then I think you need to take a, a closer look at understanding that this is a natural process and it's important. I know that this can be also a sensitive uh, topic for people who are dealing with illnesses or physical ailments. If that's not something you're comfortable with, maybe don't watch this video, but if you're someone who has a period and you wanna learn more about uh, menstrual cups keep on watching what is a menstrual cup a menstrual cup is a little silicone cup like this it holds period blood during your period and then you, you take it out and you pour it out and you put it back in. Typically, menstrual cups, as far as I have seen and in my experience, have been made out of silicone. Generally, you put it in, it collects your blood, and then you have to change it at a minimum every 12 hours or so. That's pretty much menstrual cup in a nutshell. If you don't think that this will hold all your blood, you will be surprised. You will learn very quickly at how much you actually bleed. I mean, some people bleed a lot more than others, and some people find that they have to change this more often than others, but you will very quickly learn your body and learn how your cycle works which I think is interesting and it's good to know. I have a bunch of questions from you guys and so I'm going to answer them and hopefully that'll give you guys a better idea of how to use a Diva Cup. I'm first gonna talk about my experience, how to insert it, and all that jazz. So if you're wondering how to insert it, the first time I recorded this, I actually got up on the table and I'm pretty sure I showed my boobs, so I'm gonna try to avoid that today. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this cup and you're going to fold it in half and then you're gonna fold it in half again to be this kind of like U shape. And then I kind of pinch it um, just underneath the, the lip here and when you are inserting it say say this this hole here is your vagina say when you're inserting it what I kind of do is um, I lead with this like one end here so say this is like the head and these are the feet so I, I go in with the head and I just kind of like kind of put it right in there it's a little easier if it's lubricated so Sometimes I use my own stuff and sometimes I use water depending on you know what's going on that day And I just kind of go like in and then you kind of have to work quickly But you kind of have to like shove it in and it'll like pop open like this and if you've inserted it correctly It should have a seal if not that's no big deal So you kind of have to like put your fingers in okay, and you just kind of have to like turn it a little bit Sometimes I like to use my finger and I like to like scoop around it feel whether or not it's popped open because if it hasn't popped open It's not gonna work. Uh, sometimes I, I swirl my finger around to make sure that it is open and if not I just kind of like Twist pull or like squeeze it depending on what it is You'll get you'll get the hang of it um, until it pops open and once it's popped open I kind of want it to be like inside a little bit more so I kind of just like push the button um, and it goes in a little bit deeper and that's pretty much exactly how it is in the vagina anyway. This, say this is like the opening, it's like a little bit further, it's like in between my fingers, so it's like maybe in by like a centimeter or like half an inch. It doesn't really go that far, it doesn't need to go that far into your body, but that's pretty much it. And also when you're inserting, you kind of have to be aware of like the way the vagina is shaped. So it's not like a straight up and down line, you're not, you're not going straight up, that's not, that's not how my body works. So you kind of have to go back if that makes sense. <laughs> so when you're inserting it, you kind of have to do like a little bit of a squat. This is where I got on the table. You kind of have to do a little squat, you know? And then, I mean, this is the, the classic Vietnamese chill out squat. I'm holding it and it's like, it's like this inside and then I just kind of like scoop this way in and then push back, if that makes sense any sense whatsoever. That was a lot more graphic. I probably didn't need to squat for that, but just, you know, demonstrating things for you guys. So once you have it inserted, you wait about 12 hours or less, depending on whether or not you feel when it's full. So some, some of you have asked, how do you know when it's full? And I've mentioned it in another video before. You just kind of like feel it. You know what I mean? It just like, it's not quite the feeling of like you need to pee, but you, you, you feel like you're full down there. It's like when you know your period is coming, you know what I mean? Before it like breaches, you're like, oh, I feel a little something, something, you know what I mean? The way that this works is that this has like an upper ring and this is like what creates the seal. It's a little bit more firm at the top, but it's still quite malleable. But underneath this ring, there's like four little holes and this is how your body creates the seal. So um, those four holes get plugged up with fluid, I guess, and that's how it like, it's it has the suction to like stay up there. But if it's too full, 
the liquid has to go somewhere. So usually what happens is it'll leak out of those four little holes. Now that only happens if you are totally full. So there's like little lines on the inside. This much here is about a tablespoon of liquid. And depending on the person, you will only fill this up by 12 hours. Like I only fill up my cup on like my first day or two of my period and then afterwards like it's usually around like the the half tablespoon or like even less depending on how often I change it. You're gonna learn really quickly how much you bleed and how much volume there is and it's surprisingly not that much. Then again that's just my experience I don't have a very heavy period. So some of you have asked me like how do you change it? How, what, how do you know when to dump it out? Where do you dump it out? What exactly happens? Typically I am very fortunate in that I work mostly from home. I can just use my own bathroom. So say this is inside your body all right so you go in and you sort of of like pinch the end this end here not not this part this part doesn't really do that much but this part here that has like the ridges so you kind of pinch the end and that'll help sort of break the seal a little bit um, and then you can pull it out ideally you pull it out in a way where you can sort of control it and once you get the hang of it you'll pull it out and you won't let stuff like drip everywhere if you're doing it over a toilet bowl it's fine you can just like let it drip into the toilet. That's that's where I put it anyway. And then it'll be ready to, for you to wash it. So initially for washing, I just rinse it with cold water and then I can use hot water with soap. Um, the reason why I do cold water first is that that way I can get out most of the period blood without staining the cup. If you use hot water straight away, your cup will get stained a lot faster. It's like wine. You wanna rinse with cold water before you use hot water because the hot water will set the stain. I also use a Dr. Bronner's soap to clean it because there's not like a lot of weird chemicals. It's just like a regular Castile soap. The one I have is a scented one. I would rather use an unscented one, but that's just like what I have and it's fine. My, I don't find that like I smell funny afterwards. It's just like, it's just whatever. But I don't use commercial soaps on it typically because I don't really like the harsh chemicals going inside my body. I'll leave links to the kind of products that I have underneath. And then once it's clean, I put it back in and bingo bango, we're doing business. Once my period is over, what I do is cold wash, then the hot wash with soap, and then I sanitize it in a pot, a separate pot that I bought specifically for this thing. You can, I'm sure you can use other pots too. It's not that big of a deal. You clean pots afterwards, so like that's not really something you should be like really concerned about. Just for my own peace of mind, I bought a separate pot where I only use to clean the Diva Cup. Then I sanitize it and then once it's sanitized, I drain it and then I put this bag inside out. I grab the cup and then I put it in. And the inside of this is like a terry cloth towel sort of material and there's like a grommet here for you to have some airflow so that it doesn't just like get moldy. So I use this for my menstrual cup because that way it can dry, it stays clean, and it's like pretty discreet and this way I can have it in my bag. If you guys want your own little pouch like this, there's different designs that you can get. I've actually partnered with Thread of Roses, so if you wanna order one, I'll leave my code down below. But it's just like a cute, discreet pouch. After about two months of me using it, I figured out how to put it in properly and I don't feel it at all. It's actually been really, really great. I can like live my life, I can go swimming, I can work out. I don't have to worry about it falling out. It's like, you know, secure in there and we're good to go. I actually like forget that I'm on my period. It's pretty great. The only thing that like makes me remember that I'm on my period is when I have like pretty big cramps. This has actually changed my life. My period is no longer a big deal. I don't have to worry about like crinkly paper in my, in my pocket or whatever when I'm trying to go to the bathroom. I don't have to worry about the waste. When it comes to changing in public, ideally because you only have to change it every 12 hours or so. Ideally, you, you won't be in a situation where you have to change it in public, but if you are somewhere where you need to change it, generally what I do is I try to find a bathroom that is like a private washroom or like an accessible washroom, and that way I can have access to the sink without people seeing me with this like red cup. Worst case scenario, I've done it in a stall before where I just kind of like take it out, dump it, and then just put it back in. I don't wipe it with a tissue. I don't want like any like stray pieces of fiber going back in. I just kind of like dump it, try to be as clean as possible, try not to get any drips anywhere and just put it back in and then just like, you know, wipe afterwards and then I'm fine. Ideally what you should do is you should change it right before you leave and then you're good to go for 12 hours after that, which I don't know about you, but like I'm not a huge party animal, so I don't really go out for 12 hours. But if you are someone who, you know, works really early in the morning and you want to go out somewhere after afterwards, like you just got to do what you got to do. Sometimes I just use the sink in a private washroom. And for those who are like, ew, oh my God, you look period down like a public washroom sink. That's so gross. You never really know what people are putting down the sink. You know what I mean? There's been people who've puked down the sink, people who like wipe and miss and then you like get a little poop on their hands or a little pee on the hands. Like, don't lie, you've done it before. You know, you gotta wash your hands. Just wash your hands afterwards. It's common sense. People 
people are pretty gross, okay? All in all, just like give a little rinsey rinsey, try to like, you know, clean after yourself, be respectful. Someone asked, did you try multiple menstrual brands before you committed to the Diva Cup? Do you use a cheap generic brand or a brand name? I actually was really lucky and I just went for the Diva Cup because that was the one that was most accessible to me and I just bought it and I tried it out and I was like, oh, okay, this works. So that was really lucky for me, but there's a bunch of different kinds of menstrual cups. There's different makers and different shapes. You do you, I would pick one that you have seen a lot of reviews for or are relatively well known. Um, the Diva Cup is just mostly the one that is like most well known to me. And actually, Eddie's dad knows the owner and he golfs with her husband, which I think is really funny. Maybe I can film a video with her, but if not, no big deal. But it's pretty cool, it's a small world. She's based at a Kitchener Waterloo, I'm pretty sure. So cool. Yeah, there's also the Luna cup. I think there's a Lily cup, there's a Moon cup. There's different colors, different shapes, different sizes because we're all kind of built differently. You know, you can do your research and you can figure out what one works for you, but I was really happy with the Diva cup. There's two different sizes. There's number one and there's number two. The number two is for like post birth. It's not that much bigger, but the number two is a better fit for people who have given birth or who are just like a little bit larger down there. No big deal, man. We're all built a little bit differently, you know? There's other things that people put up in their vaginas that are you know, about the same size, you know? And this one has a little bit more flex, a little bit more give, so you don't really have to worry about this. This is not a big deal, you know? Our bodies were meant to push out bigger things than this. Not only are menstrual cups so great for, you know, reducing the amount of headache that you have to deal with your period, although this is the first time I've ever had my period with nails, like longer nails, so that'll be interesting. I've seen other people do it, so I'm sure it's fine. I just gotta be a little, more mindful, you know? Because it's like inside your body, it doesn't really have time to like oxidize. You don't really get like a gross smell or anything like that. It's just a pretty like neutral odor that you just pour out and you put it back in. So it's made things less gross for me, if that makes sense. I don't have to worry about like smelling tampons. I don't have to worry about like wrapping it up in a bunch of toilet papers to like kind of mask it in the garbage, the waste bin. It's pretty great. I honestly wish I had changed over sooner. It is awesome. There are some people who are concerned about they can't figure out how to insert it. It's up to you, it's your body. There are other sort of menstrual products out there that don't involve inserting something inside your body. There's like those rewashable liners. There are different things for you to use. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the Diva Cup and the menstrual cup and my experience with it. I'm a huge fan, it's changed my life. I wish I'd done it sooner. I'll be using this for the rest of my life. It's pretty great. It lasts about 10 years, but the manufacturers of the Diva Cup have said that they've used it for longer, even though health standard wise, they're supposed to say 10 years, but low key, you can use it forever. Um, and it's pretty great. If you guys want a pouch like this, again, I'll leave my link down below. The person behind Thread of Roses is also vegan, so it's really cool to support them, and they do lots of sustainable, ethical stuff. You gotta support our vegan entrepreneurs, you know what I mean? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful. If you did, give it a like, comment down below. What are some of your experiences with the Diva Cup? Further questions, I'm sure there are lots of you who love your menstrual cup, and if you wanna help out other people in the comment section, I love seeing that, I love seeing you guys like talk to each other. It's pretty cool, it's like a little community. If you like this kind of video, subscribe. I hope you you guys have a lovely period if you are on your period and consider switching to a menstrual cup soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a delicious day. Bye. The first time I went at this, I got a little off track, a little off topic. So let's try to like refocus Lisa. so this can't be a super long video. No one's gonna watch it. Boy oh boy. I'm done.